everybody, I'm Art from the 80s Show, and today we're not talking about movies, but instead, some graphic novels and comic series of 2015, and where, if you don't know, way back when I was a young lad, I used to cover comics on a weekly basis, but... There was a lot of them and they were really expensive. So while I did stop making those weekly videos, it doesn't mean I stopped reading the funny books. So thus, I have my best graphic novel slash comic series of 2015 that I think you should read list. So let's start it off with the number five pick that I have. The Fade Out is a phenomenal noir coming from Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips, who I believe are going to be doing a series of series for Image. And here they bring you just a phenomenal already beginning series with The Fade Out, telling the story of a writer who not only cannot write, he's stuck with dealing with nightmares, he's stuck in a shoot that keeps on shooting over and over again because they can't get the movie done. But worst of all, there is a starlet who has died who he was infatuated with and it seems like it may be a murder done by someone inside the studio. If you know Brubaker and Phillips, you know that these guys are phenomenal when it comes to comics, but specifically crime thrillers like they did with Scene of the Crime. And here, they just continue on, you know, showing you their skills. So if you like noirs, if you like Brubaker, if you like comics, definitely check out The Fade Out. At number four, I have a two-way tie, but there's a reason for that. Now, the first pick comes from a Noelle Stevenson book, who, yes, she has done The Lumberjanes and People Have Loved That, and I do think it's an enjoyable book, but my pick goes to Noelle. Mona, which, yes, that series was a web series that came out years ago, but the trade barely came out this year, and it is worth mentioning because it is a sci-fi sort of fantasy book in where you have this shape-shifting girl named Nimona who wants to be an assistant to this evil villain. So while Lord Ballister Blackheart is a guy who's all about rules, even though he's a villain, it doesn't stop him from getting a lot of help from this assistant and creating this dynamic between the two that is amazing just because of the contrast that they have with each other. More so, the book also has a lot of subtleties with it, especially when you look at the good guy and the bad guy and some of the interesting undertones that they have there. Nonetheless, it's a book that has already been picked up to be an animated feature film by Fox, so definitely have this one on your radar, as well as the other number four pick that I have, which did come out in 2015, and that is volume three of Last Man. It's a French novel done by Bastien Vives and Balak, I believe I'm pronouncing those correctly, but it's a series in where there's this young boy named Adrian who wants to fight in this tournament, but he doesn't have a partner, so in the first volume, this stranger came out of nowhere called Aldana, and he comes in, and he wrecks things up, because everyone's using their mystical powers, he, he just punches them in the face. The beauty of volume three and seeing how the story has progressed is that it's technically fitting into another genre and where there's little hints of time travel in there. But the beauty of it is that many time travel stories, they focus so much on the time travel that they fall into tropes and forget to actually create a story. The time travel stuff is like barely coming in in the second to third volumes of the series. What they focus on is the characters and the fighting choreography and the panels. And it's a phenomenal story and why it's so effective that that extra element of time travel is like two extra scoops of ice cream and why it's worth checking out. Plus, it's an easy read. I caught up on all three volumes in like one day. At number three, we have a book from an author that people are calling Reina's like second successor, where if you like books like Smile, you are going to love this one, and that is Roller Girl. Now, this book written by Victoria Jameson was a book that I was almost going to miss because I heard a lot about, but I went to go check it out at the library, and I saw that, oh, it's in the kids section, and I'm not going to read no kids book, but boy, would I have been dumb if I stuck with that machismo in me. Because after reading this book, I have to say, it is phenomenal. It's very simple because, yes, it's meant for like middle school kids because it's telling the story of this girl who her and her best friend once they're going into middle school are kind of drifting apart because her friend wants to deal with boys and ballet stuff and she wants to be part of the roller derby team. Yeah, my machismo is definitely gone. But it's a colorful book that's entertaining mainly because of the character where she can not necessarily be sarcastic but more so be over the top when she's dealing with these scenarios. But the beauty of it is that, yeah, it's a simple book that people who are in that intended age group are going to love but it's even more impactful the older that you are because you can look back on it and realize some of the themes that are in the story. At number two, we have a Jeff Lemire book who just last year, two years ago, it came out with Trillium, which was another sci-fi that made my top 10. But here he has Descender, a book that got picked up for a movie to be made by Sony before the first issue was even out. And if you like Trillium or if you just like Jeff Lemire's mind and how crazy it can go, you are going to love this book because it's telling the story of a young robot boy who is out there in the middle of nowhere, but he doesn't realize that everyone is out to get him because at a certain point, androids went crazy and now they're all outlawed and they want to destroy this boy who, yeah, he's a young robot who's really nice, but he's kind of programmed to, you know, just like flick a switch and automatically become the next Terminator Judgment Day. So it's really interesting to see how they're building this world and with every issue, there's like a new revelation that happens from the 
characters and who might have been responsible for everything that happened with the androids. It's already going to be a movie, so definitely pick this up and start reading it. But before my number one, I want to give some honorable mentions, such as Scott McCloud, who did Understanding Comics, which you don't need to read that book just if you want to learn more about comics, which it will just blow your mind, but more so visual medium in general. That book is phenomenal just to know how to create things visually, but this year he came out with The Sculptor, the story of a guy who makes a deal with death in order to be able to fully possess all the abilities that he wants in his art, and it was a pretty genius idea. Adrian Tomai came out with an anthology book called Killing and Dying, and I have to say, it's like if you got a bunch of Coen Brothers shorts and you made them into a graphic novel, that's what this book would be. It's interesting stories dealing with coincidences or just crazy things like a guy trying to make a Chia pet trite type sculpture. It's genius. You should check it out and I think you will highly enjoy it. Also Django Zorro because I love Django. I love Zorro. So putting them together was going to be highly entertaining. But now on to my number one, which obviously was going to be a Brian K. Vaughn book and that is Paper Girls. Now I'm sure that everybody has Saga on their either to read list or it's already one of their favorite books. But what surprised me is that, well, I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. This man is always able to come out with something phenomenal and Paper Girls was the one series this year that I was always looking forward to the next issue. It tells the story of these 12 year old paper delivery girls way back I want to say in the 70s or the 80s who run across something that eventually is going to make them the news that they will maybe or probably not deliver in the future if there is one for them. It's a book that I don't want to spoil anything because just the ending of the first issue is phenomenal, makes you want to read the next, which then makes you want to read the next and the next and the next. It's great. You definitely need to check it out and why it was my favorite series of 2015. However, I am curious your thoughts. Definitely let me know what series you checked out, what were your favorites, what you think isn't getting enough attention and you think people should read, and really anything dealing with comics because don't forget, it's 2016, comics are cool, so comment, like, and subscribe down below so we can talk about them, keep reading them, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.